We'll blow it up. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Ow! South Davis County Rec Center. Give me a holler. <laughs> anyway, settle down. Uh, it's just a rec center, you guys. So here's the deal. This is the first smart life class we've ever taught outside of my office. Woo, thank you, Mom. Um, that was cute. <laughs> That's my mom back there. No, just kidding. She is not my mother. Um, so here's the deal with the smart life. So some of you don't know me. I'm Matt Townsend. And um, come on in. With the classes, I've kind of been in this weird position, okay? Because I've taught smart life, which has historically been a life coaching class for women. Because they're the ones that asked for it. And then we tried to get guys to that class, and they wouldn't go. And then we got the women there, and they loved it, and they know their husbands needed it, even though they didn't think they needed it. So then we had date nights. So this is kind of the order of my life. Then we did date nights. Have you heard of our date nights? So date nights are where we, where we go out and we take classes about improving your relationship and we take them, uh, we kind of have gone all over the state. And those are really fun. We still do those all the time. Um, the guys kind of like that and they would show up. Then we figured out that um, what if we could just do classes like a smart life, like this, with a little bit more relationship in it and just call it smart life and invite the guys. <laughs> so that's how you got here, guys. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, what? You thought you were, you were bait and switched, weren't you? So, um, and so in this program, we're trying to just figure out what's the best thing to do with it, okay? And, uh, but we want to go on the road. Now, the biggest key that we're finding to everything we do is it's not enough to just like be entertained by Matt for an hour and a half, okay? My wife has told me this for years. It's not enough. And um, you need to be more than just entertained. So we want to give you skills and we want to give you tools and we want to make it not just about relationships but also about life. So we're going to try to do it all, okay? And right now the idea is, um, uh, some of you don't know this, but we have recorded about 100 to 110 hours of stuff that's already online. So I have 110 hours of classes and content already online. And it, all you ever have to do is go to matttownsend.com and you can download classes, and, or not even download them, they're just all there and you just watch them, okay? So we're gonna try to come up here about, I think every other week is what the idea is. It's kind of like if there's a demand, we'll come up here every other week. So we, that's how we just test it. And this is a great turnout, so um, we're proud of you. Good job. Appreciate all the guys getting your ladies here. Um, that was very cool. And no, it's hard to walk by the gym, though, isn't it? Because you're like, oh, I could be playing basketball. Well, too bad, okay? So just like it's important to work out, it's important to improve your relationship in your life. Now, here's the deal. We have an hour and a half every time we do this. But I want to know, because I know this, and everyone's heard me say this that's ever heard me speak. I know you don't have these problems. I know you don't. I know that, okay? But the person on your right totally does, okay? Um, and if you brought them with you, you nailed it. Good job. Way to put them on the right. Perfect. You've heard me say that. So here's what I want to know. If we have an hour and a half to talk about your life, not your life, but hypothetically your friends that are messed up, their lives, if we're talking about their lives, what would you want to talk about? What could we do in one and a half hours that would dramatically impact your neighbor's life? Communication skills. What else? What makes your life, oh, yuck, so different? Or so difficult? Please. Teaching new ways to think so that I will behave better. New ways to think. What else? Can you not see that? No. Welcome to South Davis County Rec. <laughs> it doesn't, are you here? Let's see if this board wise. Okay, no. Let's try this one. Red. Uh, so this is called Paradigms. Is that better? Yes. Paradigms and communication. What else? This is your life, your neighbor's life that's messed up. What do they need to learn? 
How to influence others. Any of you want to learn to influence your partner better? Any of you want to learn how to get them to quit trying to influence you? Just shut their caker. Just shut it. Leave me alone. Any of you want that one? Listening skills. Listening skills. See, you're back to communication. You just keep driving communication. Oh, yes, it totally is, actually, isn't it? Actually, listening is pretty easy. It's kind of inherent, isn't it? Is understanding harder than listening? Yeah. And hearing is easier than listening. And understanding is harder than listening. So, yeah, there's kind of an order. We'll get into that. Eventually in the classes, we'll totally get into communication. It's my favorite topic on earth. Um, next to sex, sorry, but true that. Um, what else? What else can we work on? What else? No, I know not you. I know you don't need it. But if your sister was here, she's back there. is she back there? <laughs> oh, there she is. She's looking right at you. Um, what else? Yes. Coping with stress. Do any of you have stress? Coping. Huge. What else? What else should we talk about? Life. Uh, anybody have time management issues? Prioritizing, zing. What else? What else do your neighbors need? Any of you need to learn to say no? Why'd you just go, you just guffawed. That was a guffaw. You don't have that problem. You need to say yes. Some of you need to learn to say yes and some to say no. What else? Life. What else is life beating you up with? Anxiety. And? Being assertive. But then when you're all assertive, you create anxious people. The B. Yeah, that's different than assertive. That's bussertive. With a B. Is that the B word? Bussertive. Um, what else do we want to work on to improve our lives? Ooh, finding peace and joy in the present <laughs> with what you've got. With what? Finding your happy place. Yeah. Uh, contentment, what a cool word. Does, is anybody relating to any of these? Just our neighbors. <laughs> you, let me just tell you, your neighbors are so jacked up, okay? I don't want to be rude, but I'm glad that you're here for them. Because if you weren't here for them... Their life would be miserable. What else? If there's anything else, speak now or forever. Setting healthy boundaries. Boundaries. Oh, that. Blah! Boundaries. Why do you need a boundary? Who needs a boundary? Why can't you do anything you want, whenever you want, however you want? Huh? We don't live on an island. We don't live on an island. Boundaries are for us or for them? How many believe you can actually set a boundary for them? You could. You can suggest, and then when they scale it and run right over that boundary, and then chase you down and ruin your life. Do they ruin your life? What if we talked about choice? Do you want to get into that? Do you guys noticing a theme? You guys, seriously, I think it's just the greater Davis County area. Because down in Salt Lake, we don't see any of this. I don't mean to be rude, but you guys are messed up. Um, no, but what's the theme? Do you see a theme? This is kind of life, isn't it? A um, little ego. You've ever heard me talk about that? Managing your emotions. Managing emotions, which would assume we have choice, huh? Are you sure? I don't know. Have you ever seen Snooky? On Jersey Shore? See, there is no choice to manage your emotions. Um, managing emotion would, is huge. Notice all of this. Now, do you think if I went to Uganda and I asked them a list about things that we want to get out of life, that this would be the list we'd be talking about? Yeah. I'm going to bet the list would be different. What do you think would be on that list in Uganda? Food, food. 
I'd like, a, I'd like, yeah, a mosquito net. I'd like to know how to make a net and to dig a well. And you want to learn how to prioritize between all your incredible goodness. I got this goodness and this goodness. Which one's the most important goodness? Isn't that weird? Does that make you feel guilty? Look at you guys. You've got it all. And you're so selfish, you want more. <laughs> Go to Uganda and save a life and take a net. Maslow's hierarchy of needs says once, well, once our basic needs are met, we tend to move to higher needs. And if you look at a lot of these needs, a lot of these higher needs are uh, more transcendent things. To take us above just living in the grind, we want to have more of a life. We want to have more. We want to have enough of a life that we don't let something like a mood or an anxiety or a feeling manage us or an emotion manage us. Can emotions mess up your life? What? Emotions are life. How many of you love your emotions? Give me some you love. Joy, happiness. Joy, happiness. Candied apples is not an emotion. <laughs> Christina, dig deeper. But it creates emotions, doesn't it? Like what? Lack of control emotion. Then what does it feel after you've just stuffed a candied apple and you're just sticky? And you're driving your car and your gut just is hanging over the belt. Is this too graphic? I'm a very graphic person. And it's just, and then every bump, your whole body's like, wugga, wugga, wugga. Now what do you feel? Isn't that gross? So feelings are real, aren't they? They come from somewhere. Where? Stupid idiot neighbor that gave you a candied apple. What was she thinking? What a she, does she not know I'm a diabetic? You don't give a diabetic a candied apple unless you're trying to kill him. Idiot! Is it the neighbor's fault? Well, no, you chose to eat it, you big chunk. You big chunk of burn and love. You didn't have to eat it. You're the only one that knew you were diabetic. Don't be rude. Sometimes I'll channel myself, and I'll have a conversation like that. So is it my choice if they did something that was really rude? If somebody hits your car and you feel the emotion of angry, that's your choice? You chose that emotion? Hold it. I didn't hit myself. The idiot hit me. I would never hit myself. The idiot hit me, and now you're blaming me. Why is it always about me? I'm sorry. I didn't think I'd get emotional. But why is it always about me when it was your fault? You're the one that ticked me off, because I was happy on Facebook, and then you showed up late, and when you were late, you messed up everything. I hate you. <laughs> okay, does anybody have that happen last night? <laughs> Did anybody interrupt your Facebook exploration? Okay, in my family we call it creeping. Did anybody interrupt your creeping on all your friends and neighbors, fantasizing about living like they do, and they ruined your night because your kid needed to finish a report <laughs> and needed the computer because he hadn't printed what he needed. And he told you at 10 o'clock at night that he needed a poster. <sighs> Why do they do that? Why do they do it? Why do kids? Mm, here we go. Why do kids who had all night, all night, all night to do their poster wait till you are on Farmville? bringing in your crops <laughs> before they interrupt you and then they want to, the, the, to be on the computer. Why do they do that? Because they haven't taken the priorities class. Because they're messed up. Because they're jacked up. You know why? Because they're your children. And uh, they're not your, they're your husband or your spouse's child and they carry your in-laws genes. <laughs> you know the interruptive gene? Right? Isn't this funny? We can go on forever. But why are they also jacked up? It's obvious. What's the answer? They're human. Right? And there's this weird thing called the human factor. 
and your mom and dad passed it down to you. And I don't want you to think about it, but when mom and dad, about your age ago, many years ago, 42 years for me, uh, am I 43? 69? Yeah. Mm, yuck. 43 years ago, plus nine months, my mom and dad had a moment. Okay, I don't even want to, oh. Mm. I don't even want to talk about it because it makes me sick. And apparently a moment is like seriously the best explanation for it. It was just a moment, a brief moment, my mom said, very brief. <laughs> and in that moment, uh, Matt, by the way, they weren't even thinking about me. They never do. They were thinking about <laughs> themselves. And in that moment, the human factor of Matt Townsend began. Okay. And my mom probably didn't know about it for months. And my dad probably didn't know about it for years. <laughs> and this Matt was born, okay? And out of, now, now I came out of the gene pool of two people. And we, what? Carrot, did you say that out loud? You're talking out loud again. You're thinking out loud. Um, do, I, do I like my parents' gene pool? All of their genes? Just think through your parents' gene pool. How's it working for you? Are there some genes you love? Are there some genes, eh, not so much? Yeah. Are some genes not like designer? <laughs> yeah. Are some just like real, like tough skin genes? Some are tough skin and some just have holes in them. Some are gerbos. You remember those? Yeah. Those were good genes. Um, some are, uh, some have, uh, some have been bedazzled. Is that the word? And some are just denim. Some of your parents' genes make you tired really early, like about nine, you get real sleepy. Some of you have genes to stay up all night. Do any of you pick up the um, morning gene? Mm -hmm. Do any of you, are, are any of you not a morning person that you're married to a morning person? And you just like to like watch them with one eye <laughs> as they get ready in the morning. And um, some of you got the anxiety gene, and some of you got the assertive gene, and some of you just got the ornery, ornery cuss gene. Some of you got uh, depression, some of you got big bones, some of you got the little bones. Some of you got the little bones, but you pretend like you have big bones, and you find out there has nothing to do with the bones. Some my sisters complain forever that I got the little bones. Little bones. And they got the big bones because they were heavier. And then we actually did a bone density check. <laughs> and we have the same size bones. <laughs> They're just padded better. And um, some of them got my I have one sister that's the most charitable human you've ever met on earth that will do anything on earth for you. Anything. Literally. And then I've got others that I don't talk to. That you don't hear from. And I got the same thing. One, I, one parent's one way, another parent's another way. One parent's real communicative, one isn't. One's way artistic. Really funny, one's not. Human factor. You all picked it up, okay? Just like a scoop in the gene pool. Now, some of you, interestingly, don't even know your gene pool. Because you were adopted and that was a mystery. You don't even know what is in your gene pool. To some degree, I think you might have an advantage. Because you can kind of invent it. You are royalty. You're a superhero. You get to decide. But as we start our little human factor thing, we all have it. And as we come to world and life, we now all have to deal with the human factor. And my human factor and your human factor tend to collide. Me being human and you being human doesn't always go together. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed that you can live with someone for years and you're just not alike? Have you ever noticed you live with someone for years and you actually start finishing sentences for each other? Have you ever had your partner finish your sentences for you? <laughs> we have friends we go out to dinner with and the wife will literally tell the husband, oh, no, no, don't say that. They've heard that. Uh, okay, have you heard it? Oh, we don't know. 
we actually don't even know what you were going to say. But in my head, I'm thinking, but she's probably right. I don't want to hear it. I really don't, and that's rude. And so um, why would she finish his sentence? Why is she editing him? She knows him. Or is she just rude? Or is she just saving him from humiliating himself? Or is she evil? Evil spawn of Satan. So is she evil spawn or is she saving him? Who decides? She does. <laughs> Sorry. Every once in a while I like to do that. Um, he decides what it is. Is it because she's horrible or is it because she's loving him? I had a couple in today, and um, sad thing, been married just a few years, a couple years, two and a half years, and they are so done. They're just done. How long did you date? About a year. You're done? Yeah, it's horrible. Why? And she starts crying. This is blow your mind, guys. Listen to this. Because all I want, listen to this, guys, seriously, I just want to be held and touched. And he won't hold me and touch me. I'm like, dude. No, are you serious? You can't just hold the lady? She's rude. You try holding a lady that's rude. I'm like, okay. What does rude have to do with this? You just hold her. You're acting like a woman. You don't need to complicate it. Just hold her. Isn't that weird? His complaint was that she's negative. Rude. Her complaint, you don't touch. Is that the human factor, by the way? So who fixes that? Well, if you touch, I'd be nicer. You know? It's like, an, it's like a dog that's starving. They're angry. If you feed the dog, they won't be as angry. True that. That's good advice. So who should start? He should just touch her. Right? Or should she just be nicer? And they're both, oh, well... You go first. How do you fix that? Two humans, totally different. By the way, even totally different than the majority of other humans in their gender. <laughs> That's weird, isn't it? How do you fix it? Who should change first? Do you want to yeah. Both. both should change. Okay, who of the both should go first? No. Take, yes, it takes both of them. Are you telling me <laughs> that I should? If they want it to work, they both got to step. I'm trying to. Okay. I've tried to make a move on my husband. I'm now playing a role. <laughs> That's role play. I'll do role play. Every, I forgot to tell you. Every once in a while, I'll play a role. Okay. So I'm now playing the role. So she's like, what if she says, I'm try I, so I have to make the move? What man on earth would not just jump on his wife in a second? I'm like, that one. <laughs> that one right there. She wouldn't jump on you in a second. Or he wouldn't jump on you in a second. Isn't that weird? That's her complaint. Every man, every man I know would want to be intimate the second they could. Right? Almost. No. So who's supposed to start it then? She's supposed to actually let him, uh, she's supposed to like be nice when he's a jerk and rejects her? Why? 
Why? What's it, what about her would make her need to be nice? She'll feel better about herself. Okay, here we go. Change. Now, I know you don't need it. I got it. I got it. But everyone around you thinks you do. Here's the deal. If we have two things. Now, I want everyone right now in your head to think of one thing. One thing that you know, you, if you did that one thing really well, with your partner or someone you care about, or anywhere in your life, that one thing, if you did it really well and you did it consistently, you know it would dramatically, positively impact your life and your partner or your kids or the people in your life. I need everyone to have one thing. So it's not something you're currently doing very well or you don't do it consistently. But you know if you did it, it would dramatically impact your life. Have you all got one? One thing. Got it? Now, I'm just going to ask a question. I just need you to answer it in your head. Do not yell the answer out loud yet. And please refrain or stop your partner from yelling it out loud either. Why aren't you doing it? You know you should. You know it would improve your life. You know it's, it would add benefit. And you're not doing it or you're not doing it effectively enough. You're not doing it consistently enough. Why? Why? And get an answer in your head. Then I just want you to look at the answer and see if it's an excuse. Now, if your answer is something like, well, I'm busy. I'm busy. Okay? Um, what are you doing instead? And is what you're doing instead more important than that? So, now let's get some answers that are hypothetical, because I know these aren't you, you're, you're doing this for a neighbor. Why, uh, what stops us from doing what we know we should be doing? How many of you just hate doing it? Like, ah, the dishes. How many of you like doing the dishes? I really, if, if you like it, show me your hands. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Stacy, no way. You like it? With the headset? Whoa, that is awesome. It, it, it is immediate, isn't it? Clean. Now, if I could watch a game, I could do it all day. So if I have a television right there, I can do dishes with TV. But I'm really just doing TV, and the dishes are just there. My wife puts stuff in front of me. Um, what else gets in the way? Time. Tired? You're exhausted. You've exerted your energy. We don't have time to do whatever we need to do. What else? Please. Pride. I don't, why should I have to do it? Kind of a thing. It's our, our own pride. We don't know how to do it. Totally. We just, we, we don't get it. We don't get how to do it. it effort, or work. effort or work. How many of you maybe have tried to do it before and you failed, so it's a, you failed. So now it's hard to do, because now I'm, you're a failure. I don't even know how to do the dishes. Or how many of you did it wrong and then somebody told you you did it wrong? And you didn't know there was a right way to load the dishwasher. You didn't know there was a right way because you just thought you just put them in there. But then you realize, you no, know, you have to pre-wash. Duh. You have to pre-wash before you wash. I'm like, no, you don't. Read the manual. The manual just says it can take anything off. Seriously. Tar. It can take tar off your plates. I don't know how you'd get tar on a plate, but it could. That's what they said at the store. So you don't need to pre-wash. And my wife tells me we do. We have to pre-wash. Well, I don't want to pre-wash. I just want to put them in there. If you don't pre-wash, it won't work. Well, I'm not doing that. You're not going to do it right? Well, I'm going to follow the manual. Do you hate me? The crap? What does hate have to do with this? Read the manual. It's in the manual. Now we're fighting about the manual. What do you want to bet the manual is not the issue? So all of a sudden, the human factor comes in. And now my pride, or the way it's supposed to be done, or not knowing how to do it, or someone telling me how to do it, and now I don't like that you're telling me that? What are you, like the queen? Are you like the queen of Whirlpool? Yeah, it is. Now my pride gets in the way. By the way, the pride is what? Ego. Part of the ego. So one of the things that starts to battle the human factor, and it's a major impediment to our humanity, I believe, is the ego. 
The ego is, uh, just a fun little quote, is edging God out, right? The ego is anytime you let some part of you be more important than your own value system. The reason why I should just serve my wife the way I should serve my wife is not in hopes of her serving me back. Okay, that has a name in relationships. That's called reciprocity. Right? So a lot of us try to relate with people in a reciprocal way. Where I like, and this, by the way, it's very much our, our world of economics is very much a reciprocal kind of a model. We don't just serve uh, in the market economy because we think it's just a great way to serve. We don't just, you know, have a market system because it's great. We do so because we know if we put goods out and offer you a good solution, you'll pay me money. It's reciprocal. Now, by the way, reciprocity, seriously powerful principle for average human relationships. It will tend to fail you. If you expect in a relationship that it's going to be reciprocal, it's probably going to fail you at times. What do you think I mean by that? Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you make dinner for the entire family. And none of them want it. And you rolled pigs in a blanket all afternoon because it was on Studio 5. And you even, oh my gosh, here I go, you even made smiley faces on the pig out of mustard. And your husband walks in and says, ew. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, those are for the kids, right? The big pigs are for you. <laughs> and he's like, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. I'll just do a burrito. A burrito? Does he have any idea how hard it was for you to roll the pigs in a blanket. <laughs> and he doesn't. And you're like, whatever, whatever, whatever. And you just assume he'll help clean up. Because if he's going to be rude enough to not eat the pigs, the least he can do is clean it up with the kids. And you go away to your meeting. Sure that after saying on your way out, hey, I sure would love, sure would love, the house clean when I get home. You thought that was enough. Enough said, and you leave. And they're all thinking, yeah, I, I would sure love that too, Mom. That'd be neat, Mom. Hey, I would sure love, I'd sure love some ice cream. And you get home, and you're tired, because the meeting was way long. And you don't even know why you're on the PTA. But you know it's going to look good on your resume. <laughs> Someday. And you come home and you walk in and no flipping way. <laughs> the pigs are still in their blanket. <laughs> and there's burrito wrappers everywhere. <laughs> and it's 9.30 and nobody's doing homework. And your husband's watching football. Lingerie football. <laughs> which you didn't even know is a real sport. And you're now telling me that when I get home, I should probably not react. Are you kidding me? Someone's going to die. <laughs> and mama goes crazy. And mama, now by the way, is it logical if you've done nothing but work all day? Nothing but work all day. Is it logical that you should um, just nicely, and you, by the way, and you asked, you asked them to clean. Is it not logical that they would? Are they deaf? 
They're not. Are you idiots? No. So why didn't they clean? Why? Why would your kids not clean? They, they don't like to clean. You never said to clean. Uh, yes, I did. No. You said it would be nice if the house was clean when you got home. Well, Mom, if you don't know if if ands and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> don't you love it when your kids quote something? Oh, you, mem you memorize that. <laughs> I'm going to pop your little head off. So are they, they didn't do it. Why? Evil. We're gonna, in the classes that we're going to go through, we're going to teach you why they didn't do it. And we're going to teach you to guess why they didn't do it. We're going to try to teach you to guess the most positive way you could guess. You could guess negative ways, like they hate you. And they slowly, just slowly, want to eke life out of you. Just one, one long, tedious night at a time. Trip. 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 Until you die. Okay, that's one guess. Another guess is that they were all gambling with some women from Vegas <laughs> while you were gone. And you're just lucky that you didn't catch the women from Vegas there. Okay, there's another guess. Another guess why they didn't do it is because um, their father said, ah, don't worry about it. Mom will do it. It's another guess. Um, another guess is because they probably um, have too much carbon monoxide going off in the house, and it's impaired their brain. By the way, these are all guesses. They might also be doing it because they've all got attention deficit disorder. Another guess. And they might be not doing it because maybe, give me some more reasons. Lazy, Lazy scumbags. <laughs> I added scumbags. Why else would they not do it? They were playing video games in a tournament. Why else? They were doing their homework. <laughs> that is the dumbest guess. Of course not. That was a bad guess. See, but now notice, did you notice that guess? What was the guess with that one? What made that one weird compared to the other right ones? Positive. What an idiot. Who goes positive on an interpretation when you could hammer them into the ground? Why would you choose the positive one? Me? Don't blame me. <laughs> Why would you ever want to choose positive? You know they're not. Because if they oh, here we go. If they were positive kids that were doing their homework, they'd be getting better grades. <laughs> or they would have at least known that mom wanted it done. Why else were they not? Who, by the way, who decides why they, why they didn't do it? Interestingly, you do. You've already decided why they didn't do it. You know how I know you've decided? Because you're already angry. And your anger is obviously not at yourself because you would have done it. You're angry at them. Why? Because you've already interpreted why they didn't do it. You're so far down the street with these people, you know they didn't do it because they're scumbags. Like their father <laughs> and their grandfather. Now, by the way, I know that because negative feelings follow our interpretations. If I interpret what they're doing as negative, I tend to feel negative. If I interpret what they're doing as just ignorant, I tend to feel different. If I interpret what they're doing as evil or malicious, I feel different. If I interpret that they are just clueless and I haven't trained them well enough to do this, mm -hmm. then 
That alters my thought process too. Or if I think it's because I'm a loser. Because all the good mothers that were at that PTA meeting, every one of them went home. Everyone went home to a beautiful, Mr. Clean-smelling kitchen with the children in bed and a scentsy candle, <laughs> cinnamon scentsy candle, emanating beautiful scents into the home. Not true. But if that's what I imagine, because they're perfect. Here's our dilemma with humans. The ego gets in the way. We're going to talk a ton in our program about the ego. In a minute, I'll talk a little bit more about it. Our um, thinking gets in the way. Does your thinking get in the way? How I think about this event with this family in this moment is the number one indicator of what I'm going to feel. Our thinking dramatically impacts our feelings. If you're sick and tired of feeling sick and tired, you dang well better take control of your thinking. If you're going to let the rest of the world lead your thinking, you're setting yourself up. Because the rest of the world are not going to think the way you probably think you should think. They're going to let you down. Or not even just the rest of the world, just your neighbors. Or if you can't even control how you think about this event going home and not having the kitchen cleaned. If you can't control the thought behind that and you let it go where it so naturally goes, you're going to feel what you so naturally feel. Feelings are created. So when we talk about choice, it, their every choice is the biggest choice you've ever got to make is to manage how you think about any given set of circumstances. Now, you know who taught that brilliantly? Victor Frankl. You ever heard of Victor? Call him Vic. Victor Frankl, an Austrian psychiatrist captured by the Nazis and thrown into Auschwitz. Brilliant doctor is in Auschwitz. They're performing sterilization experiments on his body. They're sterilizing the man. He's a doctor. The Germans are sterilizing him. They're um, hurting him. They're beating him up. They're doing all of these things to him, and he doesn't let it impact him beyond um, his own ability to improve upon it and think about it and change it. He starts managing his world by managing his thinking. Captured in, in, by the Nazis, he's there. And he says he used to go and stand at the fence and look over at the woman's camp where he thought his wife was. And he kept thinking about the day that they would be reunited. And he was so excited by the thought of them being reunited that it got him through this entire encampment. Always thinking about his wife. He didn't know until he was out of camp that she had been killed upon a few uh, months or so after entry into Auschwitz. So he had a dream of her for years that kept him alive. He also decided that he was going to be the one that survives, and when he survives, he's thought of himself as the man that was going to go teach everyone as a psychiatrist about the power of the human to change their own conditions. And he kept envisioning what he would teach the students at the university after all of this. Powerful, powerful human being. And what he taught was this. The last great human freedom that each one of us possesses is the human freedom to choose how you will deal with a given set of circumstances. You do not have the right to choose what happens to you always, but you always have the right to choose how you think about it. Always. So I'm not here to tell you you have all the freedom in the world. You do have the freedom to choose how you think. And as soon as you unleash that freedom, guess what? Game on. Now we're going to play. Because as soon as I can alter my thinking, and especially align my thinking to something as powerful as my values, which we're going to do in the program. In, this, in these classes, we're going to teach you how to make decisions based on your principles. We're going to help you identify what your principles are, what your dreams are, what your mission is, what your purpose are, what the universal truths that are going to guide your life. 
And I promise you, if you can't right now tell me, what are the six principles that guide your life? Oh, boy. Okay. Um, Hagen dazs uh, Scentsy. Hmm. Um, stampin' Up. Um, boy. It's a good question. Uh, Facebook, duh. <laughs> uh, Pinterest. Oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, anything about family in there? Oh, kids, hello. <sighs> There's another one. Oh, religion. Spirituality. I know, there, I'm, miss, I'm missing one. Oh! Is it about your husband? Mm-mm, no, not that one. <laughs> What's it? Is it about work? No, mm-mm. No. Hmm. Spanx. Spanx, that was it. <laughs> anyway, that's funny. Um, Check it out. Guys, look it up. Spanx. <laughs> Coolest thing in the world. I love them. They're form-fitting underwear that make you look skinny. Um, spankage. Thinking begets your feelings. So in the program, we're going to have you start to identify what are the values, what are the principles that guide your life, okay? The thinking begets your feelings. If you're sick and tired of your feelings, guess what? Quit blaming everyone else for your feelings. I don't know if you know this. Let's just test it. You ready? Oh, don't hate me. Turn to your neighbor. No. Um, everyone's like, I hate the neighbor turn one. I want you to think of somebody in your past that hurt you. Preferably someone you didn't bring tonight. You got it? Somebody in your past that hurt you. Got it? Could be high school. Could be, ooh, you know that kid? You know the kid on your block? You know that one? Could be him. Could be that girl. Remember the girl? Okay. I just want you to just think about what they did. Oh. Yeah. Now, um, tell yourself the story a little bit. And I want you to notice what you're feeling. What are you feeling about that beautiful child of God? Do you feel peace? I do, Matt. I want to kiss him on the lips. <laughs> if you don't feel peace there, by the way, do they? Right now, if I could go right into their world, do they feel peace right now? Probably. Red rum. <laughs> they might feel peace because they're not thinking of this story. You are. So your lack of peace then is where? It's located where? In you. You want to change your life? The only reason on earth I would try to change me is so that I don't have to have these feelings. They don't have them. I do. All feelings are generated in you. If you're sick and tired of the feelings, change you. Oh, sure. It's always about me. It is. It's your life. It's your feelings, it's your expectations, it's you, isn't it? How many of you have tried to change the world around you? And they don't change. Have you noticed that? Why? Why don't they get how smart you are? You're, look at you. You're amazing. Hello. You can get in your Spanx. Why don't they change? Because it's not about them. No, but it is. How many of you have thought, if they would change, my life would be easier? Yeah. So how many of you have noticed that they still don't change? Okay, we call that the gap. Okay, here's a crazy truth. If this, has anybody been to London? And they tell you to mind the gap? What's the gap? The gap between the subway plank, the floor, and the train. There's a gap. All over London, they tell you to mind the gap. What does that mean? Watch out for the hole. There's a hole. And if you're not minding it, you may fall into it. So in our lives, there's a gap, and I need you to mind it. Okay, the gap goes like this. The gap is what you would expect out of somebody. The gap. People hate this. You'll hate this analogy. Don't hate me. And um, then there's the delivery. So this is what you expect from humans, and this is what they deliver. 
This is what I expected from my kids, was a clean house. In fact, weirdly, I actually expected utopia. <laughs> and they didn't even eat the pigs. <laughs> Why do I try? Um, expectation, delivery. That's the gap. The bigger the gap between what you expect and what they deliver, the bigger the gap, the bigger the what? The pain. That gap is called pain. Pain is nothing more than what you expect and what they deliver. Or, by the way, what you deliver. Sometimes your pain isn't what you get out of everyone else. It's what you expect from yourself, right? You ever let yourself down and you feel pain about it? Like, I should not yell at the kids. I shouldn't. You know you shouldn't. By the way, those things that you know you should do more consistently that you don't do, that's a gap between what you expect you should do and you don't do, that gap tends to cause you some pain. How does it get acted out? Where does that pain go? I don't know. I stuff it. And then it comes out in haagen -Dazs. Nothing wrong with haagen -Dazs. This gap then is the pain. Okay, now I need your help with this. Expectation and delivery. By the way, mine or yours. If I go to Taco Bell and I expect to go without E. coli and they don't deliver it, gap, pain, pain, okay? Um, if I expected my kids to clean and they didn't, pain, right? If I expected my wife to want to touch me, hello, look at me and she doesn't, pain. Got it? You got two choices in the pain. You got a million, by the way. What are the two choices, historically? Lower your expectations. Lower your expectations? Never. <laughs> I will never lower my expectations. I will always expect my kids to clean, even though they never have. <laughs> or try to pick up their delivery. One of these you have 10 times more control over. And one of them you have 10 times less control over, right? The expectation is so much more in your power to manage. And you could do it like that. You could think, holy cow, these children and husband are jacked up. I will never, ever on earth expect them to do that again. By the way, is that healthy? No, no. All the ladies are like, no! <laughs> Heck no! No way on earth! <laughs> That's just funny. All the guys are like, well, yeah, <laughs> duh, I like this guy. We're coming back. This guy is good. I really like the guy. He says, lower your expectation, lady. <laughs> so I want you to notice that. It really is. It's the women that will not lower it. No, I would much rather live in a naive dream that something's going to happen than in the cold, hard reality that it never will. It makes sense. It's brilliant. Go pretend, oh, okay, I'm, hey guys, I'm going, going to the PTA, and I'm going to leave, and you guys, I know what you're going to do, duh, you're going to clean, okay, and when I get back, there will be a unicorn <laughs> in the garage, and butterflies will be flying around it, and I will be a size two, <laughs> okay, mom. Bye. Have fun at church. I'm going to the PTA. You must have not heard me. Okay, have fun with Susie. Expectation high, delivery low. High, low. You got two choices. Lower your expectation or raise their delivery. Where do you spend your time? 
Most of you have spent most of your life doing everything you can to get everyone to pull their heads out <laughs> and make mama happy and deliver. <sighs> Do you guys know what I delivered? <laughs> you don't even remember, son. Twelve years ago, the day you were born, <laughs> mama pushed you out. And you rip mama a new one. <laughs> you don't even remember this about mama. You don't remember what mama gave you. But mama gave you life. And if you want to keep it, <laughs> you better start delivering. Now mama loves you. Now watch how weird this is. So is Matt Townsend saying you should lower your expectation? I don't know. Matt Townsend is saying you should make your expectation what it really is. If they're not going to clean, then be real about it. Does that make sense? If you're finally lower your expectation to what is real, most of you are like, no way! I would just get real. It's not going to happen. They're not going to clean. Now, by the way, if they're not going to clean, then what should we do? I wouldn't make food. <laughs> or I just put newspaper out and throw it all on the newspaper. <laughs> now, by the way, some of you are like, never. You need plates. <laughs> no, only you need plates. Expectations in your head says you need a plate. If, but if, what would happen if all of a sudden you didn't expect that to change? You would probably start to feel different. And at first, what would you feel? Depressed. Then guess what you'd feel? Before you've got a PTA meeting, and you know no one's going to clean but you, what would you do? I have them help me clean up before I go. Everyone. Yes. Hey, everybody, right now, right and now. I'd probably, should you ask like an angel? No. Should you scream and tase them? Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't tase them. But what I might do is I might be stern enough because if I know they're not going to do it unless I, they're invited and it's real, then I'd probably get real. And I'd have a real moment. Yeah, but then I'm a witch. Well, you're kind of a witch either way. You're going to be a witch at 7 or you're going to be a witch at 10. Pick your witch hour. But part of my belief is that if I would just get real with you and I would pretend like it's not going to happen otherwise, I'd probably end up being more real. Now, you know what I would do? I wouldn't clean it up either. What? Have you not heard of E. coli? I wouldn't. I would guarantee you, if you didn't clean up that night, they'd notice. Don't you think? What if you didn't clean up the next morning? What would happen? How long do you think it would go before they would actually clean up? <laughs> oh, we've tried it, Matt. <laughs> Have you ever seen the show Hoarders? <laughs> that was us. Now notice, you, the funny thing about it is you can't handle going that long, right? They, can. they could. How bad would it have to get before they're like, what the crud? Your girlfriend comes over. What happened? That's right. What happens when, what happened with the pigs in the blanket? This one's all green and curled. This pig's sick. Do you have the ability to wait? What would happen if you didn't even care? That's crazy. Somebody's got to care. Yeah, who would that be? You. And if you care, then I would clean because you care. And it's important to you. And I wouldn't even hope that they would, especially if they don't. I'd even try, though. I'd try to enroll them. Let's get them to help. Now, what I found out, though, is because the minute I'm thinking it and feeling it, guess what I'm going to be doing with it? 
I start doing it. I start acting on it. So if I feel angry with them, I'm going to act angry with them. If you knew somebody had had a head injury and ran right into a tree and had a head injury, and they came up and told you, you're stupid, would you be mad? Is that not rude? It's ignorant. It's ignorant. What is it? It's a head injury. When people have head injuries in a weird way, we give them the benefit of the doubt, right? Because they have an injury. They're challenged. When people are challenged and we know it, we totally reframe them, don't we? Why? It doesn't work otherwise. So watch what happens. We've lowered the expectation with a head injury patient. Are you saying my husband's got a head injury? <laughs> yes. I totally am. But their injury is more maybe social or emotional. They're just different than you. And a lot of you ladies might have your own little challenge. Like maybe sometimes being rational. <laughs> Hypothetically. <laughs> so some of us might be more emotional and some of us might be more rational. And some of us are logical and some of us are non-logical. And some of us think you cannot go to bed with dishes in the sink. Red rum. That's murder backwards. Red rum. Can you not go to bed with dishes in the sink? Watch me. <laughs> I don't have any problems going to bed with dishes in the sink. That might be your dishes sink challenged. Aren't you? And some of you might be sexually challenged. And some of you might be spiritually challenged. And some of you are financially challenged. And everyone in this room is full of challenges. By the way, it's part of the human factor. As humans, being challenged is part of the game. Some of you might even notice that your dad was financially challenged, his father was financially challenged, and, you're, uh, and you are financially challenged. So if you're financially challenged and somebody comes up to you that has filed five bankruptcies and they say, hey, have I got an opportunity for you? <laughs> Little rule, I'd ignore them. I wouldn't believe the most challenged person in the room. If you have six kids that are cleaning challenged and they, you go home and they don't clean, what should your response be? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. Never mind, you guys. Cuties. <laughs> now, most of you are like, yeah, but my kids aren't cleaning. They are, but they don't have to be. But here's the dilemma, or one of the things we run into. If you know someone is challenged, you think of it. If somebody was really mentally challenged or retarded, I actually like the word retarded. Some people hate it. I like it because it means something. What does it mean? Slow. There are people that are socially slow. Some of you are married to them. True, true. Some of us are emotionally slow. We don't get our emotions very well. Some of us are too emotional, and we can't control it either way. That's a challenge, either way. What we need to start doing with our partners and the people in our lives are quit assuming everyone is healthy in all realms and start noticing where they're challenged. And when you notice where they're challenged, I'd start managing your expectation. If I expect a mentally challenged person to be as mentally strong as I am, I will be disappointed every single day I show up. You buy that? If it's true with mental challenges, it's got to be true with social challenges. It's also got to be true with emotional challenges. It's also got to be true with spiritual challenges. Do any of you know people that are spiritually challenged? Okay, we've all got something. So part of our deal is, if we're all in this crazy human factor, and our egos are getting in the way, then we have to start thinking rationally based on who we're dealing with. And if what I see is someone's challenge, I'm not going to buy their economic plan if they filed for bankruptcy four times. I'm not. So I'm going to give you some rules. Will you write these down? Five or six rules for dealing with somebody that's challenged. By the way, be thinking of the people around you. What are they? By the way, some kids are just kids. 
Kids are kind of just inherently challenged. Your job is to tutor them and mentor them in these areas. Right? Sensitivity. Like one of the greatest things you can ever teach a kid is how to be empathic and caring of another. So if you see someone that's homeless on the street, you can teach your kid a lot by just getting your child into the thoughts and the minds of that homeless person. Gosh, Spencer, can you imagine what it would be like to be this guy right here that doesn't have a home? And he knows that tonight he's going to go down and sleep in the park. What would that make you feel like if we lost our home? See how I can now tutor my child to feel empathic? That would be scary, wouldn't it? I wonder if that man is scared. That's a powerful thing to teach a child, isn't it? And what about um, social skills? Like, hey, whenever we go up and we talk to people like that, we don't say, hey. You don't say, hey. You say, excuse me. Sorry for the interruption. We can teach social skills. By the way, social and emotional are intelligences we can teach. Spiritual, I believe, are intelligences we can teach. Mental, short of actual damage, are things we can teach. We can teach people to be more intellectual or study or read. There's things we can teach. These are intelligences. Most people believe the intelligences are things we can improve upon. Here's the questions we're going to ask, okay? One of the first rules. So anytime, so think of this. If you deal with anybody in your life that is impacting you, I would bet there's some challenge going on. By the way, don't always assume the challenge is them either. Because <laughs> if they were here tonight, they'd be learning how to deal with you. So here's some rules. Rule number one. Don't, um, I'm making it up as I go. Don't, don't believe the challenged one, where they are challenged. Do not believe the challenged person where they are challenged. If a mental retard tells you you are stupid, don't believe them. If a financially challenged person tells you how to make money, don't believe them. Do not believe the challenged person where they're challenged. So will you all think of somebody in your life that, challenge, that is challenged? Y'all got one? Identify even how they might be challenged. Socially, emotionally, financially, spiritually, physically. Um, but don't believe the person that's challenged where they are challenged. Okay? Believing is a way of thinking. Um, that's what's so neat about us. When we come across somebody that really has a real disability, we immediately, and especially when we know that they're disabled. I had a nephew, or a, uh, what do we call him, a cousin-in-law, who, um, he was challenged. He had, like, autism. That he looked so normal that no one would know. Is that problematic? Because you, be, once you know, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Why, I'm, like, I'm, I'm talking to my wife right after I met him. I'm like, why does he shake my hand all the time? Oh, that's Richie. Richie's got autism. Oh, okay. Come on, your kid shakes your hand a lot. <laughs> now, is that weird? If I think he shakes my hand too much, I could then judge him. Hi, hi. How are you? Good, how are you? He talks funny. A weirdo. Is he a weirdo? He's perfect, isn't he? And challenged. Where's he challenged? In the human factor. His essence, perfect. Son of God, beautiful. As perfect as he could be. Jacked up, human. Get in line. Okay, you know where I learned this? I had a friend that came to me. I'll give you more rules. I had a friend that came to me. Um, I used to counsel young adults. And uh, I'd spent an entire day dealing with young adults, young adults, young adults. All these people with problems just messed up. Cutting on themselves, uh, addictions, pornographic, pornography addictions, all these things. And at the end of the day, I was just exhausted, and I had one more person to see. And this person came in and had cerebral palsy. Okay? Super smart guy. Crooked walk, drooled, talked funny. And sat down with me, and as we were talking, by the way, he had two uh, business degrees. And was in a management program. Pretty smart cat. And we're sitting there, and he starts sobbing and crying. And these were his words. And this is, what, this is where I learned this whole idea we're learning. He said, I just want to be normal, like everybody else in this group. 
And I'm like, this group? Because they're jacked up. And he was probably the most normal, but was physically distorted. Spirit, essence, beautiful child of God. Other people, emotionally distorted. Spirit, children of God. Some, financially distorted, in debt, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars at the age of 20. Distorted. Spiritually, beautiful children of God. And I realized everybody's jacked up. Everybody. And so as soon as I started noticing that instead of just noticing and assuming everyone's normal, I, by the way, I sent him home to do an assignment. His assignment was to go, I wanted you to imagine a bowl of fish, and every fish in the bowl is abnormal. Some have a crooked fin, some don't have scales, some have no gills, some have one eye. And I want you to come back next week and tell me what's normal in a bowl full of abnormal fish. And he came back with this huge list of what's normal. And one of the first things he said was normal in a bowl full of abnormal, abnormal fish, which, by the way, is this world. What's normal in a bowl of abnormal fish in this world, which is us? He says the most normal thing is to think everyone is more normal than you. When you have one eye and the others have two and that one's got six, <laughs> I'm so jacked up. How come everyone has multiples of eyes and I've only got one? I'm a loser. And by the way, to me, that is why it's so funny that we adore a six foot nine basketball player. That is an absolute anomaly. That is a freak. <laughs> Do you all get that? That is a freak. Six nine? <laughs> what, a, what a weirdo. And we get weird, we don't even stop there. If the men could have their legs extended, we'd be on it. But we can't. But when women see somebody with a nice bust, I'll have it. I'll take two of those. <laughs> yeah, give me two of those. And uh, let's take a little bit off the midriff. How much do you want? Let's do an inch all the way around. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that the weirdest thing? And why are we doing it? Because we want to be more freaky. Because we think our freak is too freaky. I got the big bone fat freaky. I want the skinny petite freak. Isn't that weird? We do it. We call it normal. Right? So he came back. The number one thing that's most normal about a bowl full of abnormal fish is you think everyone is more normal than you. That's the human factor. You also um, do whatever you can to look and be like the other fish in the pond. You want to be like them. You want to be included. You even might hide some of your idiosyncrasies so we don't let everyone else know. You might put a patch over your third eye. <laughs> you might put like a mirror around you to distort your optical illusion of your crooked fish, your crooked fin. You'll do whatever you can to seem normal. And then two people in this pond circling kind of hazy water, and then we get married, and when we're married and the lights are out, it's fine. And then eventually the lights are turned on and you're like, what the? <laughs> you've got four eyes. <laughs> well, I know, but you've got a crooked fin, you freak. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, that's the mate and switch. We'll talk about that too. It's totally real. <clears throat> so here's the rule. When you come across anybody that is challenged, okay, AKA, any human on earth, here's the rule. Don't believe them where they're the most challenged. If you know your partner doesn't get relationships and they're relationally challenged and you're advising them on the relationship and they're like, whatever, you're the problem. Rule, don't believe them. Don't believe them. Just because they're flapping doesn't mean they're right. Got it? Don't believe them where they're challenged. Don't let them set the expectation. They don't know how to run a relationship. If somebody is sexually challenged, let's not that let them lead. Let's also not, by the way, we'll get some more rules. Rule number one, don't let, them, don't let the challenged one lead where they're challenged. Rule number two, don't argue with the challenged person. <laughs> This seems obvious. What do you win if you win an argument with someone that's challenged? 
No way, I totally schooled that challenge person. <laughs> Nobody can dominate the challenge like me. You will never win an argument with a challenge person. You don't win. You don't race with somebody that's physically challenged. Hey, I beat him. Ha! I beat him. Not even fast. Isn't that the dumbest thing? Why, you all laugh at that like that's rude. So I schooled him. He, he, yeah, he, yeah, whatever. Isn't that silly? But you're going to argue with a relationally challenged person. Why? You don't argue with them. You just look at them like, oh my gosh. I am so sorry for you. You have no idea what a healthy relationship is, do you? Does that make sense? Don't be offended by it. So don't believe them. Don't argue with them. Third rule, don't be offended. They mean you no harm. Remember when the Martians would always land? We mean you no harm. That's what they are. They mean you no harm. They don't even know what their problem is. And you do. Why do you? Because I'm amazing. You know because you're not challenged that way. But you're challenged another way. By the way, do you know what way you're challenged? Uh-uh. Well, like sometimes I'm too nice to people. <laughs> yeah, you're an angel. You just fought with the guy that can not run. You're nice. You don't believe him. You don't argue with him. And you don't take offense. If you don't take offense when they're challenged, it puts you, I'm not trying to make you better than them, because you're not. If you could see your challenge, you'll realize we're all just humans. As soon as you know we're human, I don't need to be offended by it. That's why I honestly believe your God, if you believe in one, or the most powerful humans you've ever known on this earth that influenced people for good would not take offense to them. Because they get that you mean no harm. Because you don't know any better. If you knew who I was, or if you knew who you were, you wouldn't need to be mad at me right now. You're just forgetting who you are. That's my whole lesson on ego and essence. If you were more in your essence than your ego, you would not need to be offended by people. It does you no good to take offense. It literally is a useless response. Offense is. Offense, if you turn it into love, is healthy. Anything you turn into love. Does it mean I stay with the person? No. But if I'm going to leave somebody, I would try to leave them out of love and not offense. I would leave them out of love and not fear. I would leave them out of love and not anger. Most of us in relationships, we default to the lowest denominator and we take offense and we think that that's okay. But you being offended is a way of thinking that generates a feeling. And when you are offended, most offended people become offensive people. Make sense? And hello, justifiably so, because I did pigs in a blanket and I served the community and I came home to this. I hate you all. Mama's going on a drive. And yes, there's going to be ice cream. And mama leaves. And all the kids are like, <laughs> Mommy's scary. And they're all like, clean, 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 clean. And now we're warping these kids. And the neat thing is in 20 years, they'll wake up. In the middle, we got to clean. Get up. Everybody up. Up, 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 up. I don't know why, but I feel the need to clean. Why? I, I don't know. I think my mom's coming tomorrow. I don't know. And then we wonder, like, I don't know why this happens. And the mom goes, oh, my gosh, your house is so clean. All the kids are like, they're all shaky and, I'm afraid. Hi, Grandma. That's true. That's a true story. <laughs> from, the, from the history of Matt Townsend. So rule number one, don't, don't uh, believe the person where they're challenged. Don't, rule number two, don't take, don't argue. don't argue. Rule number three, don't take offense. Rule number four, do not ignore a challenged person. Just love them. Oh, sure. <laughs> Easy for you to say, Matt. 
Don't ignore challenged people. Why? That's mean. Good. That's so, that's so good. That sounded very motherly, too. That's mean. But it's true. We don't ignore them because it's wrong to ignore people. They count. They count. What counts? Their essence. They're sons and daughters of a great God, I believe. Gandhi believed it. We believe this. If you believe that there's a divine spark inside of every human on earth, that's what we honor. I don't honor your shell. I honor your essence. That's what motivated Gandhi to do peaceful resistance. Because how do I fight somebody that has a divine spark in them just because they're following orders? I won't do it. That's what motivated the whole suffragette movement. Because if men have divine spark, then so do women. And if women have divine spark, why should they not have a vote? A vote? And Louisa May Alcott in the book Little Women sparked a huge movement in our world. That's what motivated um, uh, Nelson Mandela. That's what motivated Abraham Lincoln in the Emancipation Proclamation because they have divine spark inside of them. That was Emerson. That was Thoreau. That's been taught in our culture forever. And so if it exists, and it doesn't have to be organized religion, it could just be a divine spark. And if you believe it, then where we live it is when we're dealing with someone in their most challenged state. Which, by the way, is every one of you when you come into that moment that's most complicated. It's always something higher. And that higher calling is calling you to be better. It's not just calling you to make them better. It's calling you to be better. And the best way to make someone better is to be better. You be better. Quit expecting them to be better. The minute you lower your expectation that they need to be better, they've got a spark inside of them. So do you. You also now know what to do with it, so do it. So we don't ignore them. We just love them. The next rule is we don't try to fix challenged people. We fix ourselves. We don't try to fix challenged people. I had a friend that ate. um, They came over. We had a huge jar of M&M's, like huge, like probably like 20 bags of M&M's. And this kid came in and literally ate half of it. He was disabled. And he got sick. Now watch. Well, duh! What are you thinking? Five bags of M&M's? What do you think you're going to do? Pull your head out. See how offensive that is? Should I fix him? He got sick, sick. Oh, at our house, great. (laughs) Look who's cleaning it up. Isn't that sad? What should I feel for a boy that's sick? Not on my couch. Out of here. Get out of here. See how just not, that doesn't resonate with right. Um, Next time he comes over to my house, should I sit him down and say, okay, now Timmy, sit down. (sighs) Timmy, these are M&M's. M&M's have chocolate in them, which is from the cocoa bean. And when you have too much of a cocoa bean, you're going to get sick. And first, it will irritate your stomach and your inner bowel. (laughs) Should I get into an explanation here? Wouldn't it make more sense to just hide the (laughs) M&M's? Now, that's me adapting my approach to what? The ability, the challenge level of the person. If I have people in my family that are cleaning challenged, I'd work on their level. If I have people in my life that are relationally challenged, I'd understand that. You, by the way, they're very easy to notice because their parents are jacked up. (laughs) Just look upstream. The chemicals that polluted them now are all from the upstream. And you look at them, you're like, no, no. You've known this for years. And you can see some of the chemicals getting down to the kids. So what do you do? You yank them out and you throw them in another pond. They still have the genes. Oh, jeez. So what I do is I make a concerted effort to do everything I can to take my intelligence of relationships and teach them. Why didn't God give us some non-relationally challenged children? Hmm, I don't know. Let's see, let's just start with their parents. 
If you have somebody in your life that's challenged and you haven't worked a way around being more effective with them, that'll get us to another rule. Um, Another rule is don't keep looking for signs that they are challenged. Once you know they're challenged, you no longer need evidence. (laughs) If you keep being surprised, like, oh my gosh, you will not believe what he did today. What? He hung up on me. Rude. Because whenever I hear that, I'm like, oh, you mean the guy that's emotionally challenged? Yeah. Can you believe that? I know. Guess, Guess what he did? He showed up 20 minutes late. Oh, my word. Seriously. Do any of you know somebody that's time challenged? And you're still, oh my gosh! Where have you been? If you're still surprised by someone that's challenged, you tell me where the problem is. It's no longer in them. It's you. You've got it. Get it off. Get it off. Get it off. Oh my gosh. I've got it. I've got the bug. If you're married to someone that's time challenged, and it doesn't matter what you do, they're still late. Guess what I would do? I'd expect it. I'd expect it. They're going to miss the wedding. They're going to miss it. That's okay. So marry someone else right then. Marry someone else and say, oh my gosh. Oh, did you miss it? Yeah, I was going to marry you, but you weren't here. Weird. Bye. You can get it annulled. You can get it annulled, but do something different and get married. Isn't that absurd? But if they're going to be always late, guess what I would do? I wouldn't drive with them. I wouldn't. I'd take two cars. But what if they want to save money? Oh, wow, okay. Well, I'll be here. I'll be here at quarter two. If you're here, we will leave together. If you are not here, Mama leaving. Mama leave. We take twice as much gas. And Mama buy a big car with lots of gas. (laughs) And I would adjust my life. And I wouldn't buy. I would buy an expensive car with a lot of gas that takes a lot of gas to move it. And I'd pull a boat. I really would. I'm taking the boat. You're not going to be there. It's going to cost us four times more. But whatever. Never know when you'll need the boat. I'm even going to fill the boat up. I'm going to fill the boat up, and then I'm going to tell it. And I'm going to put all the scouts in the back. Do you want to bet he'll be there? If, he's, if, he, if money matters, I bet you bucks he'll show up. You're not taking the boat with the scouts to go downtown shopping. Well... I don't want to. You know what? He'll totally show up. And if he doesn't, it doesn't matter. You take a bunch of scouts downtown. (laughs) Seriously, spend money, send him to a movie. He'll freak out. You paid for a movie for the scouts? What was I supposed to do? They were downtown with me. I didn't even want to take them. Isn't that stupid? But you know what? I guarantee he'll start to notice stuff. And when you don't even expect him to show up anymore, what happens when he shows up at 710 and you're not there? Where are you? I'm at the play. Downtown? Well, yeah. Well, I thought we were going together. Well, I have a ticket, but I'm about to scalp it. Are you coming? Well, do you want me to come? Well, yeah. Well, then why aren't you here? Well, because we were going to be on time. We were. Yeah. Hurry. And I wouldn't even roll my eyes. Don't even, don't even waste your time rolling your eyes. Just pull your iPhone out and get on Facebook. And when he shows up, 15 minutes late, out of breath, sweating, just smile and say, hi, hi. And then you know what I do? I try to have a nice night. Wouldn't that be weird? Do you want to bet he'll start to learn? Like, that was weird. Me go late, me run, me sweat. Me have mucho sweat on damn forehead. Me didn't even know where we were going. Me need to ask. You could leave the ticket at the box and go right in. You could take your lover. No, I'm just kidding. Did Matt say we could take a lover? No, no, take your sister. Take your sister. You're being cute, but... Thank you, so are you. The changing... What if you just told him it was an hour earlier than it really was? Would you hear that? What if you told him it was an hour earlier than it really was? He still might be late, but which might be right on time. You know, I honestly think that's a cool trick, except... It only works once. Yeah. If something only works once, then it's really not a permanent fix. And if it means you have to lie, 
I wouldn't lie. I would just say, here's the deal. The movie or the play is downtown. It will take us 20 minutes to go. I would like a little extra time so I don't have to stress about it. So I will be here ready to go at 7.15 or, seven, or quarter to. If you're here, that'll be great because that's when I'd like to leave. If not, you can meet me there. You can do whatever you want. At 7.20, I'm scalping your ticket. <laughs> or, by the way, honestly, I'll just waste your ticket. Well, I can't waste the ticket. Well, I didn't. He did. Make sense? So by the way, by me being different and seeing you as you really are, I start to force your hand. And when I treat you like this is who you are, you know what you'll usually see? When you lower your expectation to their delivery, and he's like, why don't we do anything fun anymore? And you're like, well, quite honestly, because you're never home on time. When you start to not expect it to happen that way, and you want to just start saying, I want to adjust it so it's going to work better, what you'll usually see is, I could be home on time, and you're like, oh, no, you can't, <laughs> you cute little patootie. You've never been home on time. Look at you, all cute. <laughs> you'll be amazed that he can show up on time. Or when it actually starts costing him or something that is something that he really cares about, do you want to bet money? He'll start to learn. And you know why he'll learn? Because the consequences are now hitting him. Boom. Boom. Right now, if you're the only one that cares if we're on time, you keep catching it. I got it. And then you like cry that you're exhausted. Oh my gosh. Why do I have to catch everything in our life? Well, I wouldn't. Boom. Boom. Some of those things that are going to fall are going to be his. Boom. Why didn't you tell me so-and-so called? Actually, I did, and it's on the board. Well, who looks at the board? Everyone in the family. <laughs> I did tell you when you came in, and I said it was on the board. And now you're complaining. I just didn't remind you seven more times. Well, that was important. I know. Gosh. <laughs> That's crazy. Could I keep reminding him? Sure. And if you want to keep reminding him, then quit complaining about it. Does that make sense? If it's important that you want to play that role to keep reminding him, then quit bemoaning it. Now just serve him. But it's not reciprocated. I know. He's challenged. He doesn't get how to do this. So just instead serve him. And just love serving him. And love keeping him on schedule. And love keeping him on time. And love keeping him ahead of life. And love keeping him out of the gutter. And love keeping him getting hit from getting hit by trucks. And just appreciate that you're doing that role. Quit waiting for it to come around. Now that sounds so weird, isn't it? So when do I get loved? Then what I would do is once you know who they are, um, the last rule is uh, don't let the challenged one drive the show. The last rule is we don't let the person that's most challenged be in charge of it. We don't let them lead. You wouldn't let some people drive your car when they're challenged. My mom's visually impaired at night, so I would not let her drive my car. I also, by the way, do not let her do our dishes, because we learned that the hard way. <laughs> um, she sat on our dishwasher door. <laughs> she didn't mean to. She just tripped on it, because she couldn't see it. And then she sat on it. And you know what? It wasn't bad. $800 later, we decided we're not letting her babysit anymore. It doesn't mean we don't love her, but we can't leave the kids with her because they'll outrun her and they outplay her. <laughs> so the la that's the last rule. Now, what this gets down to then is once I see who you are, I don't have to be offended by you. I don't. You're a wonderful, decent, caring person that I can love. I don't want you to love somebody just so you're loved back. I want you to love somebody because it's right. And when you love somebody because it's right, you're living your values. Does that mean I have to stay with the horrible lug forever? No. But if you have to leave the horrible lug, I would leave him with character. And a big thing we're going to teach in the program is character leads us to communication. If we have the character to not react, the character to stay in our essence, the character to see it in others, the character to not take offense, the character to be true to what we know is true. If we have that character, it gives us power to understand another soul. Character leads us to communication. 
Communication leads us to being better companions. If I can talk with you without taking offense, I can be a better partner. I can understand what your weaknesses are. And I can serve you so that I love you your way. And now, what I would also do, though, is I wouldn't still not try to influence my partner, but I'd influence out of love, out of strength, not weakness. And then the last thing, once I'm a good companion and I understand what you want, you understand what I want, then we change. And every day we try to change. And here a little we change, and there a little we change, and line upon line we change, until eventually we start to change. And the change isn't about them. Once I've got it, and I've got the change, then I become an attractor, where I now have more power with you. That's why Gandhi had power, because he was changed. So that's kind of how this program's going to go. Online, here's the deal. Online, there are already 100 hours of content that will get in-depth to a lot of what I'm already saying. We're going to be coming back up. We actually don't know the schedule, because we were waiting to see how you responded. So um, I have a feeling we're going to come back up. And, um, cause, and I want you to bring all your challenged friends. <laughs> I can hardly wait for the next one. The next one's going to be so great. It's like the Beverly Hillbillies. They're all going to come in here and be like, oh, boy, look at that one. Oh, he's really messed up. That one's got a bad one. <laughs> um, but we're probably, when, Josh? Thursday when Do Thursday nights work? Okay, yeah. because they're horrible for me, but whatever. Um, <laughs> just checking. We can probably do it. Uh, is, does this location work? Yeah. You likey? Yeah. Okay. So what if we came back in two weeks? What if we came every two weeks? And we'll video it. Now here's the deal. So it's $15 a week for class. Or um, it's $27 a month to be on our online subscription. If you're online, you can get access to all of the classes and come to the live ones. Make sense? So it's only $3 more if you just want to come to the live ones, or you can get online and get both. And I'll tell you why, because as we get into it, I'll start outlining certain modules, and there's certain modules you could already go watch, so if you happen to miss one, you can go watch it. Plus online, some of you don't know this, but online, uh, it's I, all my date nights. Have you heard of my date nights? I think we have eight or nine date nights, which are two-hour events just for couples that we've taped and are online. So you can go, instead of paying $35 a month or a date night, you can go online with your partner. You know what? I'd get, I don't know, I'd get a pizza. I'd get your jammies on, the cute ones, guys. Um, <laughs> and then I would go have a date night and watch and learn some skills to do it together and do the activities on the date nights. Also on there is a 10 and a half hour workshop that people pay $480 to go through. And it's all on there. And a downloadable workbook. Not for you, of course, but for the people that you love. <laughs> okay? So if you want, the way you go online is you go to matttownsend.com. Matt Town Send. Three words, two names. Uh, <laughs> matttownsend.com. Right when you go there, there's some video that kicks on, and then there's some box that says... Click here to get started. If you click on it, you just put on your name and the information. Um, when you enter your information, you give a credit card. It's $27. Every 30 days, that will ring up another $27. You can cancel any time you want. Um, I personally, just how I'm a cheap tightwad, I would go on, and I would just read and learn as much as I get. There's also comment boxes where you can put comments, and I will coach you. If you have questions, throw them on there, and I coach you on the phone. I swear it's me. They always make me do it. It's rude. And um, <laughs> like I don't have a lot to do already, but I because we want to make it so you can get coached. So ask questions. You can, even, uh, you can even comment on everyone else's comments. Okay, This video will be on the site within a day or two. You can actually then send your friends and neighbors to see this class. And then if you subscribe, it'll be on the back side of the, work, of the website within about three days, two, two to three days. Does that make sense? It's way cool, and that's kind of the only way I found to get it to you. Then what we'll do is I'll probably go to Ogden and do, a, on the other Thursday nights, I'll be doing an Ogden one. So if you have friends further north, Brigham City, they're jacked up. The goal is we want to change the world one jacked up human at a time. <laughs> and so if you have kids or neighbors or friends, send them to this. This is going to, we're calling, we're eventually calling this smart relationships. 
It's smart life and smart relationships together, okay? Okay? Any questions? Yes? Mm, it's a great question because I didn't know we were doing this topic until about an hour ago. And I love your spontaneity. Well, I don't. It actually causes ulcers. Um, yeah. You know what? Everyone wants that, and I'm sick of it, quite honestly. I um, No, because for me to do that, I have to think, and I try to avoid that. So, yes, we are. Well, the problem with the curriculum is I literally have a year and a half's worth. So to actually categorize it would demand a lot. But I will, we will, you will know. I swear you will know. We will put it online. Where do we put that, Josh? I got to read my website. To be determined. But I will. I will put on, um, because we used to do it in Smart Life for Women. We did it for a while. It's just, um, it will be on there. Yes. And um, I will figure out what the next, in two weeks... I don't know what it'll be. All right, I'll just tell you right now. But look online, Matt, Town, Matt Townsend.com, and we'll put it on there. But how long will this series be? This series goes for eternity. <laughs> um, here's the deal is that, like, we just ended one for singles that went eight weeks, we told them. And the reality is this will go on forever. I will go. I will try to, I mean, we'll miss a holiday here or there or whatever. Um, whatever. Thanksgiving, I think, is a Thursday holiday. Um, uh, other than that, this will just keep going. I, I mean, it's weird but, and sad, but because I really only teach this much content and then this much crazy weirdness. If you add enough crazy weirdness, your content goes a really long way. Um, so part of what I do is I just kind of report on life, and I'll just keep teaching new stuff. And the interesting thing is I just finished with school. It was so good, GED, finally, and um, <laughs> hard. It was so hard. Seriously. Oh, my gosh. My wife is so relieved. Um, but here's the deal. Now I'm actually learning again. Like, I quit learning in PhD school. I just stopped learning. Why? And, but now I'm reading a ton of new stuff. So uh, we're actually creating a lot of content. We're also writing two books right now. And we have some really cool announcements we'll be making about those soon. Okay? Uh, questions, yeah. Can I just say, this has changed my life. I've been coming for, what, a year and a half? You're a lifer. I'm a lifer, and it also changed my marriage. Did it? You changed yes. your marriage. It's amazing. But the things I've gotten from you have yeah. helped me change. Helped me change and That's another reason why it's going to last is because eventually we'll just start doing a lot of, like, Q&A, and you guys will be able to throw something out. I think what eventually we'll do is I'll go about an hour, and then we'll take maybe a half hour to go on a topic and take it deeper. I'll go about an hour and 15 minutes, and then I'll do Q&A at the end. So it's live. Now, let me just tell you something about this comment. I don't change anything. Let's be very clear. I don't want that responsibility. <laughs> Seriously. Because if I blow it, I didn't cause your divorce either. Um, but here's the deal. I promise you, if, if you'll just keep coming, and I would bring, you'll have somebody this week that will say something to you that will remind you of this night. And when they say that, I want you to teach. You start teaching, not like, oh, well, look what I learned, but you just teach that I learned the neatest thing about interpreting and how you see somebody, and teach it, and I promise you, if I can influence you, you, I guarantee, will influence others, and that is how you change the world, right? It's not me, and I would like to take credit for it, and I try to, but it never works. I want you to own it. These are your lives. And you're, the deal is you came to every class and you asked the questions you needed to and you were there and you learned, okay? So this is, your, this is you, this is your marriage. And the neatest thing about all of this is you change. And when you change, I promise you, I promise you, your world changes. When you are different, your world changes. You no longer need to be offended. You no longer need to be scared. You no longer need to be driven by fear. Your essence will start to lead you. Okay, I promise you that. Okay, any other questions? Get out of here, you guys. You're nice. Oh! Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're just saying that.